Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to look at how to create in-cell charts using the rept function and we are going to see how these can be a great addition to your Excel dashboards and reports and also even a better alternative to using sparklines. Now I've got a few examples to go through here. In example number one, I have some names and I have some scores. And I would like to create an in-cell chart for some visual on those. So in cell C2, we are going to use the rept function. So I'll type equals REP, and here we are. A function that repeats a piece of text a given number of times. So what we're going to do is repeat a symbol the number of times of the score value in column B. And that's going to create the, the visual of some kind of bar chart. So if I continue with the rept function, so it prompts me for the text to use. We'll open up my double quotes and I want to use the pipe symbol. Now on a UK keyboard, I can access this by using a shift key and then the button to the left of the Z. And then I can close the double quotes. You may need a different approach depending on the language keyboard and the type of keyboard you're using. I then put in my comma and the number of times is simply cell B2. So can you repeat that symbol the number of times of the value of that cell? The 71 in the case of Maureen. Close bracket, press enter, and this is what we've got. And it's going to fly in off behind my other table there. So we're going to do a few little modifications to this to take it a little bit further. Let me begin by just copying that value down though, so I'll get one for all of them. And then the first major change we're going to make is I'm going to change the font. At the moment, I'm in the standard Calibri font. We're going to change this to a font called Playbill. And this will immediately look better. I can now make a change of the font to a color such as green. And here we have an in-cell chart. So if I was to change the value for Mickey here from 55 to 89, the chart would grow and then back to 55. So there is one in-cell chart, very quick and easy to create by using this rept function, and then changing that font into the Playbill font. But we could take this further, as great as that is. Maybe we want to apply some kind of conditional formatting, so that if the value is less than 60, then it should be a red or an orange color maybe only green if it's over 60. So if I select column C, come into conditional formatting and new rule, use a formula. Now I need a formula because I want to refer to the value which is in column B, a different column to the cells I've got selected. In the box provided equals B2, so you only refer to the first cell of that range. I started my selection here from C2, so I refer to the, the equal of the other column. Less than 60. Format button, font area, let's pick a nice color. Let's go for a, a type of orange. Okay my way out. And here we go. So the ones that are less than 60 go orange. And if Maureen was to drop to 46, automatically turns orange. And I'll just undo that to go back to the value it was. So by using these in-cell charts, we can take them a little bit further maybe than what you can with the built-in spark lines. As great as they are, I love them. But by applying these conditional formatting rules in different fonts, we can push them a little bit further. Now I've got another example I'd like to run through here. So if I select columns A to D and just hide those to bring my next table across, I have some products 
and I have some ratings. And I want to use an in-cell chart for those ratings. Because I've demonstrated rept function with the pipe symbol. But what's great here is that we can use any other symbol. And there are loads of symbols available in Excel. This includes emojis and icons that you can get from the, the screen keyboard nowadays. So you can really get your imagination going about how you can create different types of charts here. For me, I want to use a classic star rating. Now, the first thing I want to do is just click in a different cell, come to the Insert tab and bring in a symbol. Now, from the Wingdings area, I'm going to look for the star symbol. I can see it's in my recently used set here, but it's not much further down when scrolling if you need to find it yourself. Character code 171. I insert that first. Then I can simply take a copy of that star and come out of that cell. Now one thing to notice here, if I click on cell J3 that I just put the star into, if I go to the Home tab, the Wingdings font is applied. So when I insert a symbol, it gets the symbol and applies the Wingdings font. Over in column H, where I want the stars to go, we still have the Calibri font. So that's something that we'll need to deal with. But let's get this rept function started. Now I've got that star copied into my clipboard. So I'll type equals REPT open bracket. What is the piece of text that you want to use? We'll open up the double quotes and paste in the star symbol. Now look how it changes to that chevron icon. That is because of the font. Don't let that put you off. Close double quotes. Comma. Reference the cell next door with the rating value. Close bracket and enter. Copy the formula down and then change the font from Calibri to Wingdings. So it actually looks like a star. Where is Wingdings? Here we go. And look at that. I can now get rid of this star in that cell. So now we have these star icons based on the value of column G. I think I'll select those cells and make them a nice yellowy gold color. Obviously we can make them any color we want. And for one final little addition to this one, maybe I'm looking at values such as 4.7 and 3.55. I don't really like the fact they represent as four stars and represent as three stars. Once you go over that number five, I think you can use the next value. So inside the rept function we go by double clicking. Now because the Wingdings font is applied, it looks a little bit crazy. <laughs> so I'm not going to edit it in there. I could bring the font back to Calibri and change it. But instead I'm going up to the formula bar where it still looks pretty normal for me. And around the G2 value, I'm going to put the round function. So I can round G2 to zero digits. Close bracket, press enter, copy it down. So now the 3.55 is represented as four stars and the 4.7 is represented as five stars by rounding it to the nearest value. So I just wanted to demonstrate here how we can take these a little bit further by adding these formulas, adding in conditional formatting rules and get a little bit more creative with our, our illustrations and our visuals on our reports. Let me just select this whole sheet and unhide those other columns. Here we go. So this is all of our handiwork. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.